Ah, what am I doing wrong? Ta 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 Sorry about this, folks. There's supposed to be a... A dialogue option that is not there. Hmm. Hmm. The game has decided it's going to be a uh, buggy today. Hey, coach. Jenkins, watch what you're doing, man. Your tackling technique betrays no knowledge of the sport. Though it's been years since I stepped off the rugby pitch, Holmes, that group looks a sorry lot to me. Possibly. Let, let's just talk to this guy. Excuse me, young man. I ain't hawk. It hurts. It off onto you. As a hurt, see him. Yeah. Here, boy, have you seen a young woman named Sarah Car Caraway? I don't think I've ever heard the name, but then my duties keep me very busy, and the players don't talk to me much. It's a fashionable couple. We really can't talk to them. The coach is really going to ignore us. Not with you hanging over my shoulder. I got 15 blokes done to the left from the right. Yeah, we're not going to get anything from him. Now, come on. I know we're supposed to get something from here. Is Madagascar oil? He's tall or short? He's very tall. Color of his hair. Okay, there we go. That's what I was doing wrong. I do recall a young man like the one you described. He wore a striped jersey with a number on it. I remember because I remarked on it, and he said he's played rugby at a field near here. I'm afraid I don't recall the number. She's not going to give us more than that. So I'd like to purchase some perfume. And we want to, we want a particular perfume. Yes, I know the name. We want the name I cannot pronounce. La Côte d'Azur. Something the blue. I don't have any La Côte d'Azur here in the front. Let me go to the back and see from my stock. I'll be back in a moment. And while she's gone, we want to very quickly talk to the girl. I'm looking for a certain young man who purchased perfume from the shop recently. I remember the man you spoke to my mistress about. It's like my mistress said, he was a rugby player. I don't remember his number either, but I can tell you he smokes senior service to get cigarettes. 
I know because he dropped an empty packet on the floor right in front of me as I was sleep sweeping. Here we, here it is. I really must speak to my assistant about keeping these shelves properly stocked. And we purchase it for no apparent reason. Well, there's, there's reasons, but... Let's see, can we go to Kensington... Sorry, it's been a while since I've played this. A very long while, and I'm trying not to rely on a... And I'm trying not to rely on walkthroughs. Yeah, he's just gonna brush us off. Okay, water boy. Oh, I don't want no wages, Gov. Like helping the team. I'm gonna be three quarter when I grow up. He is the water boy. Actually, what we need to do. No, we don't need to go back to Scotland Yard. We need to go back to the morgue. So I'm all confused. Confused being the right word. Well, let's speak to the inspector. Perhaps he can help us with our problem. I know this is riveting, isn't it? I regret to inform you, Inspector, that your name alone is insufficient for the purposes of circumventing the yard's procedures. In other words, Inspector, you are not a person of interest. What? Well, of all the incompetent, come along, Holmes. We'll get this sorted immediately. Because, damn it, people should know who I am. I have a name. I'm somebody. Why doesn't anybody like me? Well, come along, Mr. Holmes. You too, Dr. Watson. I need some papers from the yard anyways. We'll get you in to see Lestrade, and then I will return here. Because apparently they are morons. This should only take a moment, Holmes. And then I must fix my mustache and get rid of my sideburns. And get rid of this hat, because Watson has one. And we all wear nondescript gray clothing. What seems to be the problem here, Constable? I can have your job. No problem, sir. Truth is, been pretty quiet. Quiet, eh? If you'd like to keep it that way, Constable, I'd not suggest you allow Mr. Sherlock Holmes, detective, and Dr. Watson, who doesn't actually ever seem to do anything that doctors do, to immediately enter immediately. But, sir, my orders are... W I'm well aware of your orders, Constable. Allow them entrance on my authority. I'll assume responsibility for Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. And hopefully they'll, they'll say nice things about me. Very well, sir. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, you may consider yourself authorized personnel. You may enter whenever you wish. I don't know what personnel means. No, well, I do, but him, I'm making, sorry. Much obliged, Constable, and thank you, Inspector. I shall remember you in my will. It'll say, I remember you, Inspector Grayson, Bacon, whatever the heck your name is. Well, let's go in. And there's a guy in a bit lighter blue, but let's, let's look around. I haven't been doing lots of looking. It's the bullpen. Police procedure is... Not all excitement in bringing the criminals into bar of justice. The constables in the bullpen plod along and recognize and unappreciated keeping the important records of the Metropolitan Police up to date. I'm not actually sure if that's an acronym or not. I know it's called the bullpen now, but... Hmm. I'll have to look that up. A huge oak with desk. Here, the duty officer assigns cases to constables and inspectors alike. The duty officer is not unlike a king of the police precinct, and his desk is his throne. Yes, I know, Kitty. Duty officer. Let's look at him. 
twice decorated for con conspicuous bravery during the Sepoy Mutiny of 1857, Sergeant Jeremy Duncan has recently confined to a desk since his war wounds began to rebel. He wears a replica of his Victorian cross in his lapel. He has a regal bearing befitting, befitting his that, that, that befitting a duty officer with an author that, 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 that I can't speak today with an authoritative presence and a voice accustomed to command. He handles his duties efficiently and without resistance. Kitty, love you, but stop that. Good day, Sergeant Duncan. I wish to speak to the Inspector Lestrade. So with half the lads in Dar Dartmoor Prison, Mr. Holmes, he's terribly busy at the moment. But with all this ripper business, he left word not to be disturbed. Perhaps I can take a message. I need to speak with him myself. I dare not disturb him, Mr. Holmes. He left orders special-like. Now, well, we're not going to get anywhere this way. So let's... Now we can uh, use our apparently blind vendor. Hello, Augie. I need your advice on a matter concerning Scotland Yard. Ah, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, what can I do for you? I can't get Sergeant Duncan to fetch Lestrade for me. Do you have any suggestion? I might be able to help if the price were right. I am not in the habit of paying your exorbitant prices, Augie. Well, we seem to be at an impasse. Do you know what impasse means, Augie? What do you say, Watson? Shall I grass on Augie? Why not, Holmes? I have no backbone. Augie, tell me about certain Duncan, and I'll expose your little game to the police. Whatever are you on about, Mr. Holmes? Can't you see? I'm blind, and my eyebrow twitches a lot. Apparently, I have spatial spasms. You're not blind, Augie. You're shamming for sympathy. It is marvelous for your business, I shouldn't wonder. And I've seen the way your eyes move behind your glasses, and the way you arrange the apples on your cart. Unblemished side out requires sight. You never feel for the size of a coin or bite to test its metal. You hawk your wares more loudly when a well-dressed couple walks by, and not at all when a beggar rambles by. I've seen you accurately box the ears of a stealthy street urchin trying to steal an apple. And just a moment ago, you addressed a greeting to Dr. Watson. There's no way you could have known he was here. Enough, Mr. Holmes. Let's just keep that this amongst ourselves, shall we? Live and let live, eh? I'll tell you this about Duncan. The way to the brute's heart is through a compliment. The man is a fool for flattery. It's acceptable as a child to a kind word he is. Thank you, Augie. Now, d leave my sight before I threaten you again. And I tell you how your clothes are shabby. Okay, Duncan, we know your game now. Good day, Sergeant Duncan. Is the inspector available again? He's still drowning in paperwork, Mr. Holmes. You could leave a message with, if you wish. Cat, I don't want you... No. You have claws. Get down. Thank you. I'm sure an officer as distinguished as yourself and the winner of the VC on top of it knows when to supersede such an order on his own authority. Perhaps I could get him down here for just a moment. Inspector Lestrade, please report to the duty officer's desk immediately. I say through a telephone as if it's an intercom, which I don't think works that way. What is it, Duncan? This had better be important. Why did you have your sleeves rolled up? This is not the night... Kitty cat. Tilly, stop. It's Inspector here. Mr. Holmes to see you. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, but that, the way he's dressed and everything else, I'm sorry, it looks more like a private detective from some noir movie or book than period accurate. Hello, Inspector. I'm glad we found you. I would like you to release some items from the Caraway murder investigation. What do you mean, sir?